Okay, we've showed you shooting the stud shot in this room. We've also showed you shooting the uh, drywall. Now we've got cabinet bases in, we've got a stove in, it's going to confuse the issue a little bit. Um, in this particular case, we're going to just create a few things where you don't have to shoot them like this little piece here and that island over there. Um, okay, so what we're going to do first is show you how to auto fill out the lines that are straight and then we're going to scribe this back wall all the way around here. Then we're going to extend this over here because this cabinet base, you notice this is loose. Had that happen to you before, but anyway, we're just going to offset this line over so the stove opening is nice and tight. We're going to create a box here and overhang it and radius it the way the customer wants, but we don't even have to shoot this, and we don't have to shoot the island uh, bar either. Um, okay, so let's get started and start shooting. Okay, we're going to show you two methods of templating all on the same top. One would be auto filleting. Auto filleting is when we hit two points on each straight line and cabinet front bases are always straight. Never shoot multiple lines on the front of a cabinet base because in case they're not perfectly straight or bowed, you don't want that faceted edge, especially when they're CNC. So I'm going to hit one point here, one there, one on this cabinet base, one all the way down here on this cabinet base. Then I'm going to hit two points on this base over here, like here and there. If you can come back here a little bit, I'm going to show you. Then I raise it up a little bit and hit two points on this straight edge. All right, now that's the end of the straight cabinet base. So I'm going to switch over to start a new line and hit points every stud roughly along here. You can hit more points and you'll see that I stop about three inches out of the corner to allow for the drywall mud buildup. Put one in the corner, three inches out of the corner, and as often as you'd like all the way down to the scribe wall. Uh, generally, you need one about every 16 inches or less if you want to be real picky. I also put a little pin target here, something you need to notice. This is the dishwasher, and I want my people back to shop to know where the dishwasher is so we don't put a seam on top of this thing. We're going to seam it probably over there. Actually, I'm going to leave them, when I do the slab layout, decide where to put the seam. But here, they know where not to put the seam. So we're going to put a little cross here, drop an icon of a dishwasher in here, so when the person who decides where to seam this top knows they don't want to seam it here. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, we start here by putting two points on this small base unit side here. Come around the corner. I don't want to stay there because I get a reflection. So I'm going to come back here a few inches. doesn't matter. It's a straight line. Then over here. Then I will come over here and hit two points on that wall. Now I'm going to raise it up and hit this full height. Many of you on the full height would like to offset that a little bit um, so that you uh, won't have such a tight fit when it goes in. Okay, now I'm going to start over with uh, start a new line. I'm going, to, I'm going to get out of auto fill it. Now we're going to start scribing here. I'm going to start right in the corner. There's no drywall mud here, it's a straight wall, so I'm just going to hit where I think is every stud. Or wherever you see a bump or a dip in the wall. Notice I stop about three inches out of the corner, then I go in the exact corner, come about two or three inches out. That's to avoid the glow or inflection that might come on when, when you're too close to a corner. Okay, now you can notice I put two pinned targets here. These allow you to hit the laser from any angle, because I can't hit the side of this if the laser's right there. I'd have a big smear of red light on the side of this. So I very simply put this up against here, aim this towards the laser relatively. I'm going to hit two points, which is going to create a straight line there. So we start a new line. We raise it up. It doesn't matter if I hit the front first or the back. Use a little micro adjuster to get right in the middle of that pin.
And there we go. One more thing we need to do. We need to shoot a sink center again. And we need to shoot the um, center of the um, dishwasher. So I'm going to switch over to a cross mode. Put one cross here for the dishwasher. And over here, uh, you might not be able to see it on the, on the screen there, but I have a little tiny hash mark right here. Because I measured the center of where I want the sink to be. And there's the other cross. Okay, that's all we need to shoot here to gather information. Now we're going to show you how to edit this. But the most important thing you could do at this point is to check measurements on the job site. Now, in order to do that, we're going to close up these open corners here. So, let's go into sharp fillet and close these up. Now when we hit dimensions, all those scribe points will be shown. Also, the major points in the front. Now if you don't want to have a, a lot of little dimensions here, there's several ways that can be done. Get rid of dimensions and then just say distance and tap on the two corners and that will give you the overall distance here of 136 and a half inch. Notice for the real uh, anal people out there, we have 136.507. That's seven thousandths of an inch over uh, 136 and a half. So you measure that, if that's okay. Measure any any other thing that you have two points on, let's say for example the width from that back corner to that stove. So again we hit distance, touch the two corners, and it's 36 and a sixteenth or 36.067. Very important that you check measurements immediately after shooting the walls and the base units. Why? because we have something to measure. You can imagine if if I measured this and there was a overhang here, I couldn't get the tape measure underneath there to go to the wall, but now I can go over here and measure from here to there. I can measure from this edge here down to there. Okay? Uh, in fact, if I do look at that and get dimensions, yeah, 89 and 1 8. If you come over here, I don't know if the camera can get this or not. There it is. Can you, can you get over here and try to shoot that a little bit? 89 and 1 8. So, 10, 15, 20 seconds of safeguarding by checking a couple key dimensions. Now we can overhang radius. Uh, offset the back for clearance, whatever. But it's imperative that you check a couple measurements just to make sure, especially in the beginning. After a while, you get used to it, you know what you should and shouldn't do, and little tricks. Um, you won't have to do that. But in the beginning, imperative that you check a couple key measurements to make sure you're in the ballpark and nothing went wrong.